I'm now speaking with Trinidadian-born Sterling Bittencourt. Sterling is now living in London, and here it is. I'm speaking to him in London, England. Sterling, thank you very much for talking with me. Th thank you very much. Now, many people in the United States may not know of the name Sterling Bittencourt, but this name rings a bell when it comes to the instrument called Pan, steel band. He has been one of the innovators of the instrument uh, in the times when it was coming up, and uh, was one of the people who came to London with the TASPO, Trinidad Old Steel Percussion Orchestra. So right now we'll start and let Sterling tell us his history. Sterling, um, I understand that you are one of the youngest people to have come to, North, to England with TASPO. Yes, one of the youngest, but not the youngest. Uh, who is the youngest, by the way? I think it's uh, Theo Stevens. Oh. I was 21 and he was about 17 or something like that. Was Anthony Williams in that age too? Yeah, we were about the same age. Right, right. Yes, tell us a little about it. I mean, you having to come with, um, there, you know, right now, I'll tell you, right now in Trinidad, there's a lot of controversy about who started Pan and Tralala and Tralele. Do you have a, a, an answer for that for them? Well, to say who first started Pan, it, it's, it's very hard. Because uh, I think it, it was a spontaneous thing uh, at the end of the last World War. And everybody picked up little dustbins and pots and pans and used to call it um, kittle drum and all that sort of thing. And by beating it, they, they found that they got little dents and got a little tone on them. And from that, it, it developed and people just... Uh, it get better. Some got three notes, then other got four notes and five notes and till it reached to this stage. But to say that someone really uh, started it, it, it was, was a spontaneous thing. Right, and all over the country, as yeah, a matter yeah, of fact. I, I, even in Tobago, I, I was there uh, in one of the, the VE day, and um, I saw that the people from Trinidad was over there, and they were beating this kettle drum, and I was following the band all over the place. And I even brought back a drum from Tobago and to Trinidad and start tuning and all that sort of thing. Well, listen, man, I'm glad eh, because the word of still in, still in bed and cool will be, it will be gospel truth. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, well, it really started like that. They start playing like songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb and all that sort of thing. And the first big steel drum I saw someone playing was... Um, a, boy from St. James. They used to call him the, uh, Bunkans. I was small and he had this big steel drum. I don't know where he, if he saw someone else had that, but I saw him and he was holding it up in his hand and he had about five notes on it and he was just playing it, holding it, playing, going down the road, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, uh, that's the first one I saw with a big what band. What year was that? Oh, that probably was about 46. Around 1946. Right, right. Well, let us continue on with that. So now 46 happens, and around that time, I understand Red Army went to Guyana and yes, so on. Yes, that's right. And um, I was in a band called Tripoli. That, that's the, the first um, steel band I was in Tripoli. And then uh, we played mass for a few years, and then I left, and we formed a band called Crossfire. And I tell you, Crossfire, remember that. <laughs> I have an experience with Crossfire. Um, but before that, I, I would like to tell you, I know Hugh Bond and I met him for Carnival. Yes, that's right. um, Crossfire in a fight, I think, with one of the big steel bands up in Tong by Duke and Queen Street, that's and right. a guy I, got I, killed. I, I was there that, that, that Carnival night, and I, <laughs> I had to run and turn in my, my sailor collar inside <laughs> those days because if anyone saw you with a... A Tripoli or a Crossfire um, on on your back as a sailor, they, they would, you know, <laughs> <laughs> beat you up. Eh? <laughs> but I mean, what was going on in your mind at those times? I mean, you know, Pan was something interesting to you. Yes, it, uh, I, I, from my early days at school, when I supposed to be in school, I used to be under the dunk tree tuning Pan, you know. And my friends would go to school, and when they call, we will call this. It's still in Baton Coo. One of my friends would say, Under the Dong Street, tune in pan, sir. <laughs> 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 and I, when I come to school, I get licks and all that sort of thing. 
So my, my, I remember my mother said I must take private lessons and all that sort of thing. But when I supposed to be taking private lessons, I'd be tuning pans and by the road, you know, and she'd come, she'd say, when I see I would run, you know, she'd say, come here, you little nigger man, come here. Don't run, I see you already. Anyhow, she said, oh, it's pan you want. Okay, no more private lesson for you. I'm going to buy pan for you. And she bought a steel drum for me, and I tune it, and from that, <laughs> I'm into pan. I mean, she saw that I love pan so much, you know. Right, right, right. And um, she was a sort of uh, woman that if she said, anything you, you like, I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And from that, I'm into pan. Right. Well, that's really fantastic, because I know in those days, a lot of parents wouldn't allow their children to play pan. Yes, that's right. I mean, sometimes when she go by my family, they would say, um, my mother was Stella. Stella, you still have that boy in that vagabond thing, beating pan and all that. So she said, well, leave the child. Leave the child. I mean, you don't know one day it might take him to England, you know, in a joke. <laughs> and and her word didn't came through, you know. Right. I rarely came to England. Right, right. So tell us the story about coming to England. I mean, what was it like? I mean, you were good and so on. I mean, well... <laughs> I, I I wouldn't say I was good, but I was the best in in the band, <laughs> and they they took all the best. So I used to tune a little, and um, you know they they picked me to to come to England, and I remember when I was leaving, my brother said, um, "If you come back to this country, you're a damn fool," <laughs> you know. Yeah. Anyhow, I I didn't pay it no mind, and we came up to England, and we tore all over the place. It was going good. Then we went to Paris, and then there was some s misunderstanding with some of the boys, you know. And I said to myself, I can't take on this. I think I'm going to stay <laughs> in, in Europe, you know. And they all said, you must come with us. Uh, we're coming back next year. I said, well, you'll meet me over here when you come back next year. And so they, they never came back. So it was a good thing. I alone remained. Oh, you were the only one who remained? Yes. And I met um, a good friend of mine called Russell Henderson and we got together and we made some records at first then we formed a band only three of us uh, Russell uh, another chap um, what's his name again I think his name was moving and he knew, knew nothing about pan but we sent to Trinidad and got some pan and we taught him and we did cabarets in, in in um, clubs and all that sort of thing. So what year are we talking about? 51, 52? 52, around 52. And then we started to do this sort of cabaret and people, it was the first time that they saw steel drum and that sort of thing. And then we met a chap called um, uh, Ralph Sherry. He came up and he brought a bass band. And then four of us started to play and we did a lot of touring and sing. we used to do the musical halls and all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it was a novelty, so we got quite a lot of work. Right. Well, I could imagine, I mean, 52 around that time. I mean, so in a sense, you can say that you all were the first professionals in PAN. That's right, in, in, uh, after, after TASPO. We were the first in almost ev everything. We were first in the Nottingham Carnival. Only three of us started beating PAN going down the road in the Carnival. That's about 65, somewhere around there, sir. So a lot of first, eh? Yeah. Uh, let's go back a little to the to the TASPO, the, the experience of TASPO. What was it really like? I mean, when you came, people looked at you as crazy. I mean, what was the reaction of Londoners? Well, uh, they were amazed, you know. The, some people were saying it was black magic and all that sort of thing. Because we came, but we did not paint our drums, you know. They were all rusty. You know, we, we left it as a sort of just like an old rusty drum, you know. And... When we go to play at, the, at the, um, the festival of Britain, you know, we just, and they saw these rusty old things, and then we started to play Blue Danube and all that stuff. So I said, where's that music coming from? It's not from those old rusty things, you know. Right, right. And they were all, and they said, no, it must be black magic and all that sort of thing. Right, in, in those days, right, it was right. really strange. Did, um, what was the, the music, the gentleman who came with you all, I think it was Albert Griffith? Griffith, yes. He's a very good musical uh, gentleman and he taught us good you know I, I remember when we were in Trinidad when they formed the band he said gentlemen 
we're not going up there to muck about. We're going to play music. He was a bad Asian, you know. He said, you have to play music. And when I say to roll, you must roll. Well, I'll roll your two balls, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. We used to have fun with him, you know. <laughs> Sometimes he, he would give us some notes to hold, you know. And, and some of the boys said, but Mr. Griffith, how you could give me this and that? And, you know, those two notes, that... He said, I gave you those notes, you know, and, and play them, you know. And when you play them, you hear the difference, you know, and, and everyone was surprised, you know, but they, they, they didn't know much about music. The, the notes, he might give them a C and a D or some sort of, of right. kind of, in a big sort of chord, you know, and, and, and they were trying to argue with him, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you look back, I mean, how you feel? I mean, how you feel to see Pan evolve into what yeah, it is today? I, I think... Um, Pan has gone a long way, and and the tonal quality and and it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, it's it's really a, a true instrument now. Right, right, right. But when you were doing it in those days, you thought, well, it was just something that you liked and you were getting over. Yes, it. yes, that's right. I was just playing it just as an, another thing, but it's a real instrument, and it's right now. Right. Okay, so your fifties and sixties, all you, what were you basically doing? Just playing around. Yes, that's right. Um, we used to do the colleges and, and different, um, the Lord Mayor show, you know, for so society. We played for the Queen and Prince Philip and, you know, the royal family and everything. I, I remember the first job we had for the Queen Mother. We got this job and the, the, it was a garden party and they put us far away from, from from the marquee where they were having tea. It was a, a tea party. And um, I s we saw um, a butler coming with, with his um, napkin over his He said, uh, and he's all shaking. He said, Her Majesty requests you to come a little nearer. <laughs> you there? And he was all trembling because first time she probably sp spoke to him, you know. And he was all trembling. Anyhow, we put our pants around the neck and we walk around and we were playing when you are in la da 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 and and she just gave us a nod you know and we were walking through and it was fantastic yes. from from there we never looked back you know yes 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 that, that's why really fantastic heck of an experience all right so you when did you start moving out beyond london um i think around 19 57 i think the f our first job we went to italy and then from that, we, we start moving. I went to Paris, to Hong Kong, Indonesia, uh, Kuwait, Bahrain, uh, the, the, the Doha. You know, I just come back from, from Doha, actually, in Qatar. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the continent, Switzerland, Italy, all over, you know, Paris. You know. I'm going to Paris uh, um, on the... On the tenth of of this month, I'm going to Paris. So I mean, when one really sees that this instrument called pan has really gone all over the world, all over the world. And uh, well, I started the, the in 1976 in Switzerland, and now there has uh, over 45 bands in Switzerland. Over 45 bands in yes. the country yes. Switzerland. Yes, in such a small country. No. It, it, Are these Swiss people playing? Yes, Swiss people playing the steel drums. They have all girls band, you know. You know, it's it's fantastic. I, well, I gotta head to my next visit. Gotta be in Switzerland because, in the, I mean, in their carnival, they, they they have a lot of groups playing in, in their when? carnival. I usually go and play with them. When is their carnival usually? Around February, it's same time. Around the same time with Trinidad Carnival, but they they have it for about four days, you know. Is it in winter? Yes, it, it's cold, but they usually walk and they go in the restaurant and have a drink wine and come back and go out again, so it, it's, it's not too bad. Okay, let's talk a little more about Pan in London. Yeah. Um, y you being the, the catalyst point, uh, other people started to migrate. Do you care to call some names? Yeah. To Who have come to Trinidad, um, come from the islands to London? Uh, well, you... Well, uh, let me see. People like Ziggly. Ziggly, yeah. yes. Ziggly came. Uh, Boots came back because he was in Taswell left and he right. came back. 
Ziggly uh, wasn't as photo. No, Ziggly oh. wasn't as photo. He played with Casablanca. That's right. Yeah. I knew him back home, you know. Um, many others came, you know. Can't remember the names, but a lot, 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 lot of what is Miguel Baradas, Ken John, Kenneth Johnson, you know, many others. Oh, yeah. And they're coming. That what? What? Tell me what you think happened. Well, many bands came up after big steel bands, and at the time I didn't think it was right for for the big steel band because the people had got used to the small. Um, three and four pieces because sometimes the place is, uh, is very small and it's mm -hmm. a sort of indoor thing, you know. And um, many of the bands, when they came, they found that it was very hard to, to get work for the, for a, a 20 piece or, you know, they might get a job now and one later. But And we always used to tell them, well, you should split up your band, you know, into little uh, four or five piece and, and then get they said no we're going to stick to the big and then they, they never used to get any jobs at all and some of them and eventually they had to, to, to do that you know mm -hmm. now uh, most of, of the, the boys they, they, they have small they play in small groups so although they might have the big band you know but when someone wants a, a party with four or five steel drum they, they go and do it right. even three you know well, here in London, Pan seems to be very much in, 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 in place. Yes, it is. We, we get quite a lot of work during the summer. It's, it's very busy. I mean, there, I have, over the carnival, I counted over 32, 40 steel bands playing. That, that's right, and that's, that's big steel band. And w the small steel bands must have ab over 100. Uh, you're saying 100, over 100 small steel yeah, bands? Working all the time. And there are a lot of young kids and that sort of thing. Yes, and in the schools, a lot of school activities with the steel drum. Right, so the, the school, band is in the school. That's now. right, and when they come and they get big, they join a band and they start to do gigs and go out and earn money and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's really amazing, and it, but it's nice to see how the thing has gone, you know. Um, what also I've noticed is that the second generation West Indians are playing band. That's right. Mm. Um, the the, the it's, leads to the parents, some parents um, don't like the, the children to, to play pan at school. I, mm. I knew that for a fact. One uh, gentleman said, I don't want my, my child to play any pan, he want to play a violin or so. <laughs> that's that sort of thing. And others encourage the, the children to um, play the pan. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, what do you do in London as regards with the whole pan movement? Well, I um, I just teach, you know, and go around and do all I can. If I see a youngster want to learn pan, I take him and I, I teach him and, you know, I have, a, I have my, my little nephew, he's only 12 now, he played with us for carnival, he, he wanted a, a steel drum and bought one for him and he catch on very quickly. Anything I show him is, is just, you know, mm -hmm. he's going to be... What would you recommend, I mean, for, for, for anyone who, um, let's say they put their hands in a pan, what do you recommend that they do? They just learn or pick up a music? Well, it, it would be nice to give, let someone give them some advice how to, how to hold the sticks, how to roll, you know. Sometimes you, you might start off bad and, and that hamper you in, in the, the lot. Yes, it's good to show you how to hold it and how to roll and different techniques, and that, that would be best. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, so your career is going very well for you in the area of PAN. Yes. Are you satisfied where PAN is today? Yes. I, first here in London and in, in Europe. Yes, I, I, I think I'm, I'm satisfied because um, it came a long way and it's, it's, it's going to get better, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, for, the, for the moment, it's, it's very good. Do you I, I don't say it's not up to the, the Trinidad standard, but I mean, it would get there one day. Well, do you go home often? Uh, no, I haven't been home since 1979, so I'm um, a bit behind time. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but I, I get, get all, all, the, all the records of the panorama, and I see the videos and, yeah. and different things. So I know I was in the States last year and met Bugsy and Professor and, and the... the Big boys, <laughs> right, 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 right. And and over here we have um, uh, uh, Hadid, Anis. Anis Hadid, and his band came first in in, in the panorama. Right. Which is, 
yeah, the play, the yeah. yeah, that's why it's the first time he, he got, you know, you always knocking at the door, you know. Right. But this time he really got them. Right. Um, he lives over here, by the way. Yes, he lives over here. Right. But I don't know for how long, because you always tell me I'm, I'm going back, I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, um, the, the kids are doing it fine. Um, they're into it here in London. Yeah. And Trinidad people still moving on. How do, are you? Are you fully aware of Trinidad's attitude towards Span? Do you feel that uh, Trinidad should 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 send out more, do more? I, I think they they, they should um, send out more Pan because a lot of people, especially in Switzerland, is doing so much for Pans, you know. And I think the birthplace of Pan Trinidad. I think they should do more. It should be a sort of ambassador for Pan because. In Switzerland now, they have a workshop in Italy, and they open a workshop in in Paris. I mean, people teach in Paris. I mean, and it's the Swiss who's doing it. I mean, that should be um, Trinidad work. Yes, yes, yes. Trinidad yes. Right, yeah. right, right. So you're saying that these Swiss people do? They promote in Paris all the time. They have it in schools now. They they teach it in schools. They, do and they have their own tuners and everything. And that's right. They have Swiss people who tune in Paris now. And all that sort of thing. In Germany, they have a German guy who's tuning pans. I mean, they, they, they should be Trinidadian. Should be sending. Out, they should send out the tuners and you know, and, and different instead of staying either going to the states or on Trinidad states. They should come out to Europe because it's a big field over here. Yeah. I mean, over here, the wrong carnival time. They need tuners uh, to to come up and and. You know, and and the, and the the money is good. I mean, it's pounds, and it's not dollars. Yeah. They'll earn a, a bit, you know. Right. I think and, and let us have some good pans, you know. Right. Um, listening to the pans home, and to here in London, and the other pans that I've heard, mm. I have to say that London pan songs the closest to what I hear home. Yes, because they, they have um, a few good tuners over here, especially. Um, Dudley Dixon, he's one of the, the best. You have Paris, Bertram Paris. You have Tony Charles. You have an, another chap by the call Biggs. That, that, that's probably his, his nickname. And um, many others, you know, they, they've been down to Trinidad. I think Dudley was down there tuning for um, phase two. I mean, he, he's very good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but still we'd like to, uh, some more. Um, mm -hmm. Fellas like Lincoln and, and Bertie yeah. and, and all right, the, the, the right, 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 right. Ah, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you doing so well, you know. Um, do you have any albums, records out and so? No, uh, not at the moment. In the old days, I, we made lots of, of um, albums. But there again, in, in those days, you get conned in, into thing. We make a lot of it and we never get any royalties or anything from it, you know. And and then we decide n not to do anything. On, and the people are so smart. When when you you get help, they just drop you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I, a friend called me the, this morning and he said he had an old seventy-eight of mine. He's, but he said but it got broken with Russ Henderson, myself. You know, called something called Blue Basin Samba. We we made l lots of you know ping pong samba, all sorts of things. We used to turn them out <laughs> like hotcakes in the old days. You know. That wizard of the ping pong and all that nonsense, right, you know. Right, right, right. Really fantastic, man. I um, okay. Let me see. Where where do you see Pan ultimately going? Well, where's it to go? It 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 reach Carnegie Hall. It reach Albert Hall. Uh, it reach Festival Hall. Where's it to go from there? I mean. In terms of technical, oh. Ellie Manet has made a new pan, and what he has done, uh, I saw him about a month ago, yeah. he has been able to get a, a, a graphic mm. design of the, of the pan, the notes. Yeah. You don't see them pong up or no holes, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's smooth. graphically it's smooth. Yeah. You could hardly see it. Yeah. you got to know where the notes are to drop it. Oh, and yeah. it's highly chromed, a different kind of chrome. Cool. Really fantastic. Yeah, well, th that is something I would like to see. Right, right. I would like to see because, I mean, the, the going on the visual um, aspect of, of the pan, yeah. smooth and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, he is now living in um, Rome, Georgia, in Georgia. He's in Georgia. Yeah. Oh, I see. 
Already Anything? I, I, I think next year, um, someone from the States was here, and, and they probably might like us to go over there in Atlanta, uh -huh. Georgia, uh -huh. to for the con. I think it's the first time they have in their carnival there uh -huh. in, in May. I think the 25th of May to the 29th. Right. And I think bands from Trinidad would be going up there, and they said probably they would like a sort of nostalgic sort of band right. like yeah. ours, you know. Right, 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 right. So where did you all get the idea for nostalgia? Well, we've been always coming out with our pan wrong neck f f from since the carnival start. And I think 1976 is the first time when they had all the trouble. I, I went to Switzerland and... And I, I was there for a few years, so I missed that, the, the carnival. And I came back, and I decided to um, take over the, um, the Panwong scene again. And I was sitting at a friend called Selwyn Baptiste, and Boots was there, Fillmore Davison. And I said, I would like a nice name for, for our um, Panwong neck, you know. And Boots said, um, why don't you call it? Nostalgia. I said that's the name, <laughs> yeah. and and that's the name. Of man, the way we, we managed to get the name, yeah. But before we used to just come out without any name and jam, you know, just Pan Wrong Neck, you know, right. with Russ Henderson and all of us. Are you the only Pan Wrong Neck band? Um, no, there's one came out last year for the first time, and this year, Tony Charles. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think he's he's from South, you know. Right. He does a bit of tuning and all that sort of thing. I heard that they played. I haven't heard them this year, but I heard that they played well. Right, right, right. So you see that you feel that the pan round neck is really keeping that. Yeah, the old old tradition. You know, some some of the boys say I wouldn't put a pan around my neck again. That's going back and a sort of nonsense. You know, I said you must not forget your roots. Right. I mean, a pan start. It start in your hand, and then you put it around your neck. It should, you should even go back to the hand pan, the small pans and all that, you know, that, that, you know and, and the bugle and, and the different sort of thing, you know. I, th I think it's, it's, just, it's just like tradition. You, you must yeah. stick to your tradition. Yeah, it's, yeah. Imagine they wanted to done away with the pan around neck and just be on stands or on a float or something, and people wouldn't know what it was like in the old days. Because right. we used to carry it all day around our neck. Now, when you put on a pan, some of them say, oh... I wouldn't carry this, you know. And those people in Switzerland, they carry some big size pan. I'm sure it must be weighing over 50 or 60 pounds. And they have it around their neck and they're carrying it all, all day. I mean, I, I, they must really love pan. Yeah. How big are their bands normally? Their, their bands is about 20. You know, some of them have very, very big bands, about 40. Yeah. I got to get there to see this thing, you know. Yeah. You have any names you can give me that I can contact? Right to? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Well, we will get it, yeah. Well, um, anything else you'd like to add? I mean, when you hear of the evolution of Pan being documented, what would you like to see, you know, affirmed in its history? Well, I, I think um, the, the electronic side of it, I think that, that would be good to I hear that some people were experimenting in Trinidad, but mm -hmm. I'd really like to hear, you know, right. be, because somehow on the road now, I remember long ago, I don't know if we were getting deaf or what, but you used to hear a band for miles. Right, right, right. You know, that, that is one thing. Sometimes Casablanca would be on, on the hill and we in St. James and we used to hear them playing, you know. And now a band is just down there and you can't hear. They're coming up and, and you, you want to know what it is that they're, they're playing. You know, you have to go right up. Thing. I think it has to do with, with, the, with the, the fineness of the tuning now. I think it, it must be amplified for you to get the the well right. because you know the, it's it's tuned it's tuned too perfect before you have to get you used to get a lot of overtones and roughness in in, in you know mm -hmm. and and you, it used to be loud and the, they didn't used to sing the drums so deep right. so you still get the thickness of the metal so you could have bang away and. Right. <laughs> All right, Sterling, thank you very much for affording me this opportunity to talk with you. And um, I, all I can say is keep the work up, and congratulations. You have done a marvelous job, and for me, it's a privilege meeting someone like yourself who have contributed so much. And again, good luck. Thank you very much. All right, I've just been speaking with Sterling Bittenko, a Trinidadian living in London, England, 
who has been traveling all over Europe, the Middle East, and uh, is back here getting ready again to hit the, the, the Europe on the, the French side. This is Von Martin. <laughs> Like crazy, yeah. way. <laughs> but the, the part of the bit I want to feel from beating on the road, I mean, 